whether you're a fan of what has sometimes been titled the worst designed mouse ever or not, if you're getting your hands on uh, an older mouse, there are some basic cleaning and restoration things that you may want to take care of. So let's walk through some of the most common things to look after in order to get these back into working condition. All right, what we're doing today is looking at some basic mouse restoration um, problems and some of the things that you'll typically run into. The mouse that I am planning on restoring is this um, piece of Apple equipment. I've already given it some very basic uh, cleaning on the outside with isopropyl alcohol and I have taken out um, these screws from the connector. Um, what you can typically do is you just continue to unscrew them. Maybe you have to pull a little bit until um, it goes through the entire piece of plastic to come out, but that allows you to clean these things much more and thoroughly. Um, now, um, some of the common problems and, and things that you can do with mice, um, I've prepared a few examples. Um, this particular one here is an Amiga mouse, um, and what I have done uh, with this one is I've converted it to a laser mouse. Um, typically, as you know, these mice, they come with these rubber-coated steel or resin balls, they're pretty heavy, they're designed to move across the surface and then move wheels on the inside of the mouse, and I'll show you such a mechanism in, in a bit, to essentially create the, the motion signals to move the cursor on your screen back and forth. Pretty basic stuff, right? Um, this one here was a little bit beyond repair. The board had some issues. Uh, the micro switches needed to be replaced because they sometimes fail. So I thought like rather than trying to fix that, I just swapped the whole thing for an optical one that you can get in one of those um, Amiga stores. So I've done that. It works relatively well. The only thing that I don't like is it doesn't have the same weight anymore with essentially this uh, mouse ball missing. It does add a little bit of weight and heft to the mouse and, and you can feel it in the use of it. Another thing that uh, you might sometimes find is that um, these strips are missing or, or damaged and those help to move the mouse smoothly across surfaces and Sometimes you can easily replace those with um, Teflon covered uh, stickers. So th those are usually readily available. You might have to cut them to the right sizes, but um, those are often missing or damaged as well. Something else you might find is people, people like to sell these mice here. This is for an Amstrad uh, uh, 1640. I believe they like to sell these without the mouse ball. And in this particular instance, that was specifically annoying because it had a special size. Now, these are very easy to get a hold of. This is kind of what seems to be a standard size. This is slightly larger, and I'll put the measurements down below in the description, but try and find these on eBay, on Amazon, on any kind of standard electronics store, and you will find they're not very easy to get a hold of. So, so I did some research, and what I found out is that some other mice have the same or similar sized balls, mouse balls, and so 
I got this Microsoft mouse for cheap. It is an old serial mouse and you can see I haven't really done much else to it. The only thing this was good for is it was the donor for a mouse ball that fits into my Amstrad mouse, which makes it complete. Um, I haven't fully restored it yet, but that is coming soon. This one was cheap enough, so I can always swap it out if I need it. I have other serial mice, so that was not a big loss. All right, so um, you definitely want to take these apart because there could be so much grime and grossness hiding in between all these nooks and crannies as well as on the inside of the mouse. So we'll start by removing the mouse ball and the mechanisms to open these vary. You can either screw them, some of them you push. And this is a relatively clean one. There's some dust on the inside and we'll look at this a little bit more closely, but these will definitely get a good wash in some soapy water. And then you can see that in here, I hope, there are little rollers, metal rollers. There's one here, and there's a plastic one here, and another plastic one here. Now those are the ones that will, through various types of mechanisms, create the signals to move the mouse cursor. Um, one very common one is that these drive a wheel that uh, covers uh, selectively an optical sensor on the inside which generates the signals. Um, that is one of the more common mechanisms. But you definitely want to open this up to get a little bit more insight into the mouse. Um, there is not much to do here with these rollers, but they are often caked over with dirt and grime. So use um, your typical um, cotton swab with some isopropyl alcohol to kind of clean them. You have to turn, clean, turn, clean until this is all gone. Sometimes it's a little bit more crusty and so you might have to resort to more sturdy tools like this metal toothpick to kind of scrape it off. Um, usually don't have to be worried about damaging anything in here. They're pretty sturdy, but you definitely want to get that grime off. Often if the mice don't uh, move the cursor around, having a lot of dirt in them is a common root cause. And so try to clean them first before you do anything else um, more drastic to them. Now you can open these up typically very easily. Um, sometimes there are screws hiding under labels. Um, feeling around this one with my fingernails to see if there's any indentations, but it doesn't look like it. Um, if you do need to get the label off, I like to save them and put them back on after cleaning them. Um, use something sharp like a scalpel, for instance, and carefully try to get underneath this label to get it off if you want to preserve it. I usually do to kind of retain the original look of the mouse and then you can uh, glue it back on afterwards. But we'll leave this on for now. Now let's see if this opens up. Careful. I might, yes, this is being held in by some additional clips in here. Now what you can also see is, oops, that goes the mouse button. Need to make sure we don't lose any of these components, like the spring, which seems to have a little bit of rust on it. So we'll stick this in some vinegar or evaporast to get rid of it. Uh, maybe a little bit of spray paint to preserve it. But other than that, this looks pretty clean. It will be washed anyway. Same with the housing. Um, it's not very yellow. You can see a little bit of yellow here. This might just be dirt though. I'll rinse it properly first. Um, 
You may want to retrobrite uh, your plastics. I will probably do that if this doesn't come off with regular cleaning. But other than that, this looks in pretty good shape so far. Now let's look inside. Here you can see a little bit more of the mechanism. Um, these wheels here and here and here is what makes contact with the mouse ball. So if this is moving around, it moves those wheels and then you can see here they are driving these wheels here. This is a little bit hard to see but I'm assuming this is one of those optical sensor mice. So there's a little series of holes in this wheel here that is uh, letting the light shine through or covers it and depending on that it figures out the direction. Now this one just has a single micro switch because it's a single button Apple mouse, very classic. I don't know if you can hear that. Um, those can fail too. Um, they usually, depending on the model, you can get uh, replacement parts pretty easily. If not, you might have to get a donor mouse um, to replace the insides with. This looks pretty clean, so what I'll do is I'll take this out um, and I'll brush it off, probably clean it with some isopropyl alcohol. It doesn't look like it has any components that need to be replaced. Um, so we'll remove that and it looks like it's held in with only a single screw, hopefully, fingers crossed. is maybe held in with yes okay there is an indentation that I missed under here so I'm assuming that The sensor here is held in place through another screw in here. So we'll try and get this out and then remove the board and clean it and allow for the case to be cleaned as well. Once I get the sticker off, I might retrobrite it. We'll see. And um, you can usually just stick this in the sink with some regular uh, dishwashing detergent and water, clean it properly, scrub it, make sure you get into all those little nooks where human grossness might have accumulated over the years, over the decades. Um, for some basic cleaning, you can also just use the usual Windex. Um, make sure you don't forget the cable. There's often lots of gross grime scuff marks on this as well, as well as the connector. And once you put it all back together, you should have a well-functioning mouse that will serve you for many more years to come.